UFC Sweden's coming up uh, this Saturday from Sweden. UFC, Mixed Martial Arts, headlined by Alexander Gustafsson versus Anthony Lionheart Smith. Uh, Smith coming off his loss to John Jones. Gustafsson wanting to fight for the belt again. So they matched him up. Smith was not looking forward to this fight. Uh, he wanted to take some time off, uh, but apparently his wife, according to his interview on Ariel Hwani's MMA show, uh, his wife convinced him that it was a good idea to take. I mean, business-wise, it's good to strike while the iron's hot. You don't know how much he's going to be getting the shine, uh, and he's losing it pretty quick after a loss to John Jones. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. My picks, however, I'm going with Alexander Gustafson, uh, for this one, I think just hometown is boxing is I just think I think he's the more polished version of what Anthony Smith now Smith survived five rounds against John Jones. Uh, so, you know, he's not an easy person to put away by any means. Uh, he throws heavy hands so he could potentially clip Gustafson, maybe put him down maybe get a finish. I could definitely see Smith winning this fight. I don't think it's a shutout, uh, but I just think Gustafson is just technically a little bit sharper um, and it's looked great. It's, aside from his loss to, I mean, DC and John Jones, he's like right up there in the cut uh, at the top of the light heavyweight division. So I'm looking forward to that. First three fights on this card, the last three fights, I should say, are all light heavyweight fights, which is interesting uh, for a division that's, kind of in a rebuilding period. It's like they're starting to get some interesting names in there, which is nice that, you know, John Jones is fighting some new people and not just kind of the the old guard that was at the heavyweight or light heavyweight division. Um, I've got Ozdemir Ozer, over Latifi. I just think Latifi, uh, you know, ups and downs. I think he's towards the end of his career, if I'm not mistaken, uh, against Ozdemir, who's... An interesting guy who's looked great against a lot of people in the division, uh, and I just think he's gonna. I think he's gonna get it done against Latifi, uh, Jimmy Manoa versus Rakic, which I'm not too familiar with. Uh, Alexander Rakic. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that last name right. Uh, Jimmy Manoa, I believe, coming off of a loss, got knocked out. I want to say by somebody. Um, but I got Manoa. I just a big dude at the division, heavy hands, uh, and I just don't really know the other guy. So that's I'm kind of picking, kind of guessing this whole card. I mean, it's an ESPN Plus card, which is nice. The prelims are on ESPN too, but uh, so it's 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 going to be decorated with a bunch of people from that side of the world, uh, which I'm not always familiar with some of these newer names. Uh, all of the the undercard looks fun too. There's some names on there, but uh, so I got uh, Jimmy Manoa the f it, for the uh, that that fight, and then I got Amir Khani, Makwan Amir Khani over Chris Fishgold in the featherweight division. I've got uh, Demir or Demir Hadzo No, I got uh, who do I have? Yagos versus Hadzovic in the lightweight division, and then I got Daniel Tamer. Over Bin Joe, Sung Bin Joe in the featherweight fight in the main card of next week's UFC from Sweden. Uh, should be a fun card. Here's the thing I enjoy with these cards, like Brazil does it a lot. Just when they UFC goes to these different countries, uh, especially non pay per view cards, it's like watching an independent movie. Like you're gonna see, you're gonna you're not seeing big stars. Maybe you'll see, you know, they're the headliner for sure. You're gonna know both those people. Maybe the second fight, but the main card is gonna be decorated with some people that you're probably not familiar with, uh, some newcomers, some people that have looked good in other areas. Maybe on Dana White's looking for a fight or contender series, which I think is starting up pretty soon, or. 
uh, you know, coming from a different division where they're just somebody that only fights when the UFC goes, like they can't travel. So you get a, a nice mix of people that can surprise you. It's always fun to, to watch one of these cards and be surprised. Uh, tend, I tend to believe that they have a lot more to fight for, uh, to try and get the notoriety, to try and work their way up in the UFC and maybe get in some cards on the, in, on the U.S. side. You know, have the UFC bend some, some rules to get, get their people into the U.S. to fight. Uh, so there, there is always that. That they can be a lot of fun to watch, or it could be like Brazil, where like all the Brazilians lose and the crowd is just silent. The Brazilians turn into the Japanese and become the most quiet audience in uh, in the the world. Um, but either way, I'm looking forward to the card. It's nice, nice little break, nice taking a week off for Memorial Day weekend. Uh, they typically have giant cards on Memorial Day. Uh, I don't know if maybe they just weren't doing well or they had to remix the schedule, the calendar or something like that. I don't know. But uh, it was nice having a little break. Uh, Rashad Evans recently was nominated or uh, is going to be entering the Hall of Fame, which I am kind of one of those people. I was not at all a fan of Rashad, like his showboating in like when he was in the house, his showboating didn't like. And then his showboating once he I mean, I kind of warmed up to the guy a little bit. I mean, he beat Forrest Griffin to get the light heavyweight title, which I was a huge Forrest Griffin fan. So when he beat him, I was not happy at all with that situation. I was extremely happy when Leota Machida knocked out uh, Rashad. But as he's grown, I, I enjoy him. I enjoy that he's has a career now in the broadcast side. Uh, breaking down fights on ESPN and doing uh, doing all those uh, pre and post show kind of uh, breakdowns and such, um, but yeah, fun to see uh, him in the Hall of Fame. Kind of, I don't know if he totally cements himself in the Hall of Fame. He didn't have like a necessarily an epic career, but he was definitely uh, somebody in the light heavyweight division that. You know, it, it, he came around when the light heavyweight division had a lot of stars, and he showed he showed bright. But like so many, John Jones snuffed out a lot of the flames of those that kind of wave of fighters. Uh, so it'll be fun to see Rashad and Michael Bisping going into the Hall of Fame. Uh, see who else they get nominated because that uh, fight fight week fight week uh, fight thing in Vegas is coming up. National Fight Week, International Fight Week, whatever the fuck it's called. Uh, and of course, Sage Northcutt used to be in the UFC, went over to one, got his face smashed in just a brutal knockout. Kind of interesting to see what happened to a lot of the people that went from the UFC over to one. Uh, I think DJ was the only one of which that has been successful in their fir first fight. Uh, but Sage just got flattened, got his face crushed, which apparently Michael Bisping has had a similar injury and came back from it clearly won the belt so uh we'll see sage see if it scares sage into uh fighting again but um yeah i didn't watch the fight just watch the highlight but uh yeah that's it they made some interesting announcements for fights coming up which i'm excited about a lot of lightweight fights uh we got a couple pay-per-views coming up with multiple belts on the line both female and male uh sides of the aisle as it were uh, so I'm looking forward to a lot of these fights coming up this summer. So that's, But that's it for this episode. UFC Sweden, looking forward to that June 1st. Uh, new episodes of The Ray Taylor Show come out daily. Subscribe on IGTV and everywhere else podcasts are found. Binge the full week over at patreon.com slash inspireddisorder. Inspireddisorder.com for all of my original artwork. At Ray Taylor for me on all social media. Have a great day, everybody. Peace out!